Hello and welcome to Dead Doctors Don't Lie. This is Dr. Joel Wallach, your host, a veterinarian and physician. And I'm here for kids and baby boomers and seniors who don't want to die at 75.5 like their parents and grandparents. I'm here for kids and baby boomers and seniors who don't want to be sick and miserable for the last 15 to 20 years of their life like their parents and grandparents. I am a conservative, and a lot of people say treat them like dogs, but they do seem to get better. Now, if you have a personal health challenge you want to ask about, if you have a health challenge of a friend, a loved one, a workmate, or if you want to talk about medical politics or the American Longevity home-based business opportunity, you can give us a call toll-free at one 379 2552 Again, that's toll-free, one 379 2552 Well, today is a special issue of Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and we're going to uh, devote the entirety of it to health freedom and our battle as American people against the FDA and the FTC and their campaign of restriction of the First Amendment and our ability to get truthful information to the general public. And to that end, we have a wonderful guest speaker today, Jonathan E. Mord, who has been a long champion, the tip of the spear, if you will, in this battle. We spent a lot of time and money and effort as a company, American Longevity, and myself and my son Steve and my wife Milan and a whole group of our top distributors and the individual distributors. We look at ourselves as the Minutemen, if you will, in this battle against the FDA and the FTC's restriction of First Amendment materials. And it goes back to 1773 when King George actually imposed a small tax on tea to help subsidize the British troops in North America, their care and housing and so forth. And the original revolutionaries, all they wanted was representation. That's where this term, no taxation without representation, came from. And after a while, it was very obvious that the king's government in England was not going to give them a single representative in Parliament, and all these revolutionaries wanted the rebellious ones, all they wanted was one representative in Parliament, and they'd have been happy. But the king refused to give this. And so after a year or so, this no taxation without representation theme changed to, well, the heck with it. Why don't we just revolt and we'll start our own country? And that's how it happened shortly after the Boston Tea Party, where 342 chests of English tea were dumped into the Boston Harbor. Coffee became the colonial drink of choice. That was the rebellious movement. They switched to coffee rather than drinking tea. Well, for a long time, maybe it goes back to 150 years ago when we had people like the Kellogg's who invented cornflakes. It goes back to 1902 and a guy by the name of Graham who invented the Graham crackers. These were people who believed in whole foods and vegetarianism, and they believed in exercise and fitness, and they were very, very serious about the government getting in their way. This guy's name was Sylvester Graham. He was interested in high-fiber diets and whole grains, and so he came up with the Graham cracker. And there were political reasons for all of this, so it's not just a simple thing of a bunch of health nuts running around. There's actually some real political purpose to all of this, and we're sort of at the next stage. I'm really sorry it's taken so long. But uh, bigger things, according to the government, stood in the way. Well, now there's nothing bigger than the health of America and the health of the world. And we're so proud as American Longevity to be, again, with Jonathan E. Mord at the tip of the spear in getting various things through federal courts. We're going to get into that, but I just want to keep laying the foundation. The FDA, of course, uh, believes that drugs are safer than nutrition, and they say that we can't give out nutrition because there's no evidence to support a claim that vitamins and minerals can prevent and cure diseases. Well, you all heard of scurvy, and you know you can prevent and cure scurvy with vitamin C. You've all heard of rickets. We can prevent and cure rickets with vitamin D. You've all heard of anemia. We can prevent and cure anemia with iron and copper and folic acid and B12 and many other nutrients. You've all heard of night blindness. We can prevent and cure night blindness with vitamin A. You've all heard of goiter. We can prevent and cure goiter with iodine and copper and selenium and an amino acid, tyrosine, many other nutrients. You've all heard of beriberi. We can prevent and cure beriberi with thiamine or vitamin B1. You've heard of pellagra. We can prevent and cure pellagra with vitamin B3 or niacin. And I could go through all the 90 essential nutrients. They're called essential nutrients because we can't make them. We must supplement with them. They're not in our food. Plants cannot make minerals. And I could just go on and on and on about all this. 
But when the government and the FDA and the FTC says there's no evidence to support a claim that you can prevent and cure disease with vitamins and minerals, they have the ability to shut you down when you say these things. And so I've just given off a litany of illegal statements here when I'm saying that vitamin C can prevent and cure scurvy and vitamin D can prevent and cure rickets and iron and copper and folic acid and B12 can prevent anemia. And, of course, although these are legal statements, we teach this stuff in the fourth grade in health classes. So what we've chosen to do is ratchet up the posture of the American people through American longevity and my voice through Jonathan E. Mort, our First Amendment attorney. We're not even going to argue the science. There's semi-load after semi-load after semi-load of science to support these statements. And so what we're saying now is that the... The FDA and the FTC are an egregious government agency. In fact, one of the attorneys for the FDA actually said the First Amendment does not apply to them. That's how arrogant they are. This is a special issue today on the FDA, the FTC, and our First Amendment rights and how they're being trod on by these government agencies. And I can't think of a better person to deal with this than Jonathan E. Mord, our First Amendment attorney and good friend, Jonathan, uh, welcome to Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Well, thank you for having me on, Dr. Wallach. I really appreciate it. If you would start out with just kind of a history of the First Amendment, I heard you give this once before. We're going to take the next 45 minutes of the entire show, and so we don't have to hurry. And I want you to lay out what was the origins of the First Amendment before we get into our specifics with the FDA and the FTC. And I don't know how many people really know the origins of the First Amendment, so I think that would be an appropriate place to start. Well, the American conception of the First Amendment grows out of its English roots. And in England, in the 1720s, there were opposition political leaders called radical Whigs who opposed the Hanoverian kings, George III's administration. Edmund Burke was one of these, and John Gordon and Thomas Trenchard were among them. And Trenchard and Gordon wrote 144 essays on liberty called Cato's Letters. And among those letters, there were two on freedom of speech and press that encapsulated the popular political viewpoint of the radical Whigs. And the colonists who sympathized with the opposition to George III were plugged into this notion. And from Boston to Savannah, again and again in the colonial newspapers, whenever a colonial governor at the behest of the crown would prosecute someone for seditious libel for criticizing the government. The colonial printers would republish Cato's letters as a statement of protest, those letters on liberty. In any event, this notion that freedom of speech is indispensable to human liberty is an old one, of course, dating back as long as human memory of government exists. Yet in the Anglo-American experience, it crystallized into a movement that said that there was no divine right of kings that uh, we as individuals have a birthright to freedom, that freedom of speech is among those, freedom of conscience being the broader concept. And so it came to pass that in the constitutional struggle to adopt a constitution here, when the Articles of Confederation were decided to be too weak and a federal constitution was created, there were a group called the Anti-Federalists who opposed the constitution and said that it was an insufficient protection for the people's liberties, and they lobbied for a Bill of Rights. And foremost among those rights was the First Amendment. The freedom of speech and press and conscience were deemed to be the very cornerstone of American liberty. And so as time went forward, the Constitution could not become adopted by the 13 new states without a Bill of Rights. Popular passion was strong for protection of the people's liberties. And James Madison introduced in the first Congress a bill for the adoption of the Bill of Rights, And so it came to pass after debate in the conference committee between the House and the Senate that we came up with the First Amendment. Our First Amendment was different than the English Constitution. It was designed to disarm the government of any power whatsoever over speech and press. In the English Constitution, under Blackstonian law, you would have a freedom to communicate your message, but once out, it was subject to punishment after the fact. In the American experience, we went one step further, and we said that people have an entitlement to their opinions and that the government could not punish them for their viewpoints. Now we come over 150 years later to the present era when you would think that after the adoption of the First Amendment, we would not have such things as prior restraint, preventing you from communicating truthful information. And yet today we have suppression of health information 
at every turn by the Food and Drug Administration and indeed now by the Federal Trade Commission. And this is denying people access to health information indispensable to their exercise of informed choice, not knowing the effect of a food on a disease condition, not knowing how it can prevent a disease or treat a disease, denies people a fundamental right, and that is what this struggle is all about. I should say, before I go on too much further, that the nature of this struggle is a, a part of a documentary that Steve Wallach participated in and that is available from a company called Law Talk. Uh, so if you wish to, you can purchase this for only $10, and it's an excellent Hollywood uh, video produced to document the struggle for freedom of speech against the Food and Drug Administration, the FTC. And I've probably seen it uh, 20 times, and I have to agree with you. So if anybody is interested uh, in that DVD video, it's just phenomenal. Again, this is a special issue on health freedom and the FTC and the FDA's egregious restrictions of the First Amendment. Their attorneys have said that the First Amendment does not apply to them. That's the FDA's attorneys saying those things. And just quickly, again, the United States spends more money for health care than all the other nations in the world put together. The entire world annually spends $2.7 trillion, with a T, dollars for health care. Out of that, the American public spends $1.8 trillion, more than two-thirds of the annual world's expenditure for health care. Yet, in 1990, we ranked 17th in longevity and healthfulness in the world rankings. In 2000, 10 years later, we had dropped to 24th. And in 2005, we have actually dropped down to 46. There's now 45 other countries whose peoples live longer than we do. And even if the record was perfect and we ranked number one, we still should have the right to say what we want to say about food and supplements as long as it was truthful without restriction by the FDA and the FTC. And, of course, we're being restricted. And with such a terrible record, 5.8 million casualties a year in hospitals alone in America at the hands of medical doctors, it's hardly a shining example of a successful system. In fact, the medical system in America is bankrupting America. They are a failed and corrupt system, and yet the FDA continues to support drugs and approve drugs like Vioxx, which caused 139,000 heart attacks over a four-year period that was out in the market, and the FDA never took it off the market. Merck took it off the market voluntarily because they had $27 billion worth of lawsuits, and the FDA actually voted to put it back on the market. Okay, with all that said, Jonathan, if you would uh, carry on. We were being cheated out of our birthright that was put into the Bill of Rights to protect us from really terrible agencies such as the FDA and the FTC. Kind of bring us up to date and where we're at and why we have to fight. Okay, well, uh, the FDA and the FTC are engaged in the process of suppressing truthful information about the effects of nutrients on disease and are at it with a vengeance. It rises out of an anti-competitive impulse to protect drug companies from competition that would otherwise arise were the truth told about specific effects of nutrients on disease. This story is in the DVD Freedom on Trial, and I would encourage all of your listeners to acquire that if they can. The number to call to acquire it is 1-888-R, the letter R, U, the letter U, free, the word free, 1. And that's 888-783-7331. Uh, that number is also a good one to participate in an upcoming event that Dr. Wallach and I will be participating in. This is a critical event. Twenty-four members of Congress that formed the Liberty Caucus in the House of Representatives are hosting a Capitol Hill briefing on September the 20th to allow us to explain the problems and the solutions in this area and to kick off a national campaign to change the Federal Trade Commission Act and the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to repair those acts to prevent the continuing suppression of health information. This event is critical because these members have understand and appreciate the need for this reform we're not talking about one member. We're not talking about two. We're talking about 24 members of Congress who have had enough of the Food and Drug Administration and are willing to entertain legislation to change the law. I would very much like you to call that law talk number, 888-783-7331, and give us your name and number if you want to participate in this national campaign to change the law. Dr. Wallach is spearheading it. I'm spearheading it and a number of other people who are just absolutely adamant about changing this law are in the forefront of it and will push for it as long as it takes. This is not something that we will see uh, come by tomorrow. It's 
it's going to require the dedicated commitment of American people. My personal awareness that the government was being restrictive of truthful health information began in 1958. I was a freshman student at the University of Missouri in the Department of Agriculture, getting my agricultural degree, and uh, actually did a lot of research work, was a kind of a student research associate for the dairy department, the poultry department, the beef department. I kind of paid my way through college doing that. And my agricultural biochemistry teacher was a guy by the name of Boyd O'Dell, O-D-E-L-L. And he was doing serious research on folic acid deficiencies in various animals, particularly in poultry, because you could do a lot of work with a lot of animals, very short periods of time, 21-day incubation times in the eggs of chickens. And he showed very clearly and taught this in class, and I still have my notes. I have pictures of it, which I use in my presentations in my books, of neural tube defects caused by folic acid deficiency and vitamin B12 deficiency. And these included hydroencephalocele, where the brain was hanging out of the skull, neural tube defects such as spina bifida. We knew these were folic acid deficiencies and B12 deficiencies way before then, back in the 1940s in the animal industry. And he was trying to put together research that would prove this for the human market of uh, folic acid and vitamin B12. Back then, vitamin B12 and folic acid were prescription items back in the 1950s. And it was a terrible thing that this information was not getting out to the general public. And I was kind of in on this back in 1958. And this was a long struggle, even though we knew that we could eliminate at least half of the neural tube defects in human beings just by supplementing with folic acid alone, that the FDA specifically drug its toes until the 1990s. And this is one I know that Jonathan E. Mord was on the cutting edge of this one. I'm going to throw this one to you, Jonathan, and let you pick up on it. Well, I first want to compliment you, Dr. Wallach, for your decades of fighting this battle. It has made a huge difference, and this is the only way we can make a difference, is to campaign against this unfortunate censorship that remains in our republic. It should have been eliminated in 1789 when the First Amendment was introduced to the First Congress. That should have been the end of it. It raised its ugly head in the Alien Sedition Act crisis. It raised its head when we began to regulate radio in the United States. And it's come back again with the drug companies advocating a system of censorship through the Food and Drug Administration on nutrition information and its effect on disease. The folic acid case is a very interesting one. For four years, the Food and Drug Administration suppressed the information that folic acid could reduce the incidence of neural tube defects. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention was announcing to the public through its own means on the web and in press releases and so forth that folic acid would reduce the risk of neural tube defects and was encouraging all women of childbearing age to consume at least 400 micrograms of folic acid in supplement form a day. Despite that, the FDA refused to allow the claim to be made on folic acid supplements, and the effect of that denial was to contribute to a preventable 2,500 neural tube defect births each year the FDA's suppression order remained in place. It was only until after Congress got up in arms, the March of Dimes got up in arms, Dr. Wallach got up in arms, and a number of other people in, in the scientific community got up in arms, that the FDA finally relented. But what really served as its catalyst was a suit that my clients brought in federal court to challenge that ban. And on the eve of a decision in the matter, they withdrew their prohibition. But they did it cleverly, still hating to allow a dietary supplement to communicate that information, they favored food folic acid. And so they had claims allowed for food. And so this is just one example of what we could give hundreds of examples of FDA suppression that uh, must be addressed. And hopefully, beginning September 20th, we'll start that fight. I want to go back to yesteryear, back in 1957, it was scientifically proven that we could prevent, and in the early stages, cure muscular dystrophy in every species of animal you can think of. That's right, 1957, we knew the basic root cause and cure of muscular dystrophy. And 1977, yours truly, Dr. Joel Wallach, discovered that we could prevent, and in the early stages, cure cystic fibrosis with that same trace mineral selenium. And we learned that you could prevent, and in the early stages, again, cure such things as cardiomyopathy, heart disease with a selenium supplementation. And, of course, when I came out with this information, I was fired with 24 hours notice because everybody knew that cystic fibrosis and muscular dystrophy was genetic. And this is the absurdity of the thing with overwhelming evidence 
there's no more spontaneous muscular dystrophy and cystic fibrosis in animals that are supplemented with selenium, the trace mineral. You have to actually give them drugs to create the diseases so they can study the genetics of them. It's absolutely absurd because we've eliminated the spontaneous appearance of these things with just nutritional supplements that are little alfalfa pellets. Well, the interesting story about selenium is that through Jonathan E. Mort, American Longevity, and myself have been able to get a proper claim that we're able to put on our bottles and our catalogs for selenium and actually the reduction in risk of cancer. And if you would, please, Jonathan, go into the story. I think this is the most beautiful story where the FDA was sued by another group to try and reverse this gain we'd made, and we had to jump in through your efforts and American Longevity to be co-defendants. So if you'd tell that story, I think it's such a great story in American justice. Well, one of the interesting things is that despite the fact that the Food and Drug Administration had to be brought kicking and screaming to the point of allowing a claim for such things as selenium and reduction in the risk of cancer, when they finally did allow the claim, ironically, one of these public interest groups is more interested in government control over your freedom than allowing your freedom to flourish, advocated a reversal in the uh, standard that is used to allow the claim. And so with Dr. Wallach's aid and others who came to fight for this battle uh, in federal court, we were able to go into the case as an intervener, side with the government, and present a better argument, I think, than the government made in defense of the law that we actually forced the government to adopt through litigation in 1999. I know you know this, and I know this, but why did we have to become co-defendants with the FDA? Why were we driven to side with the FDA in this issue? because the FDA had a standard in place that we created through our litigation that would allow more claims to be made, and we could not trust the FDA to defend the standard because they begrudgingly accepted it. So we went in there, fought the battle, the court let us in, fought the battle, did the good fight, and beat back the interest group that was trying to stop the standard from being used. They wanted to prevent claims from being allowed. They wanted the FDA's old position to remain in place, and truth be told, there are plenty over there at the FDA that would just be quite delighted if they had lost that case. They were obliged to defend it because the law had changed, and they were obliged to defend the legal position of the agency. But you and I knew they were not going to vigorously defend it. We knew it, and we knew we had to get in there and save it because it was too important and precious a gain for liberty. Absolutely. Okay, with all this said, I think this kind of sets the framework of where we're at now. And what do you envision happening here in September during these hearings? Tell us how you foresee this going. Well, we are drafting on behalf of you and other groups that are like-minded and think that the American people should have access to health information, a amendment to the Federal Trade Commission Act and to the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to liberate health information from the current censorship. And we are going to introduce that. Each of us is going to be given an opportunity to speak and present the problems and solutions to the health staff of the senators and congressmen on September the 20th in the House of Representatives in the United States Congress. The 24 members of the Liberty Caucus, 24 members of Congress, are sponsoring this. And we're going to introduce that legislation right then and there. We're going to give each staff member the bill, and we're going to urge those members to introduce it. And then we are going to commence 24 hours later with a press conference at the National Press Club, a national campaign to change the law. And I'm telling everybody out there that if they believe as sincerely as we do in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution and your freedom of speech, your right to communicate and receive truthful information, that this is your chance to stand up and be heard. Uh, we'd like you to call this number, 1-888-783-7331. That's 1-888, the letter R, the letter U, free one. And tell us that you're with us. Tell us that you'll support petition campaigns and write letters to members of Congress. We'll guide you. We'll help you do it. I'd also direct you to the website, www.thelibertycommittee.org. And on that website, if you go to elected officials and hit the button there, you can put in your area, your address, and it will show you who the elected official is. It will also show you the names of each of these members of Congress who are on that Liberty Caucus, and they deserve a statement of thanks from you. If you have the chance, you can 
call their office or write them a note and tell them how grateful you are that they're uh, sponsoring this event. It is the opportunity for us to kick off a national campaign to change the law. And believe me, Dr. Wallach and I have been in this fight for a long time, and we've gone through the courts and we'll continue to do that, but we really do need Congress to rein in these agencies. They're unelected, they are unaccountable to virtually everybody, and the only thing they listen to is when they're whipsawed by Congress, and that's what we've got to do. Well said, Jonathan E. Mord. And would you give us that website again? Yes, it's www.thelibertycommittee. So it's a the at the beginning of it, T-H-E at the beginning. Yes. Thelibertycommittee.org. Right. And another website they should probably visit is www.rufree1.com. That is the letter R, the letter U, the word free, number one, dot com. Okay, super. What I want to do here in the time we have left, is let you go the direction you want to go. How can individuals in their daily life, other than buying American Longevity products to help subsidize this effort, because a portion of the money that we get each month from the sale of these products goes to subsidize this fight and support this fight financially and emotionally and spiritually. And so what can the average individual do? I think this is very, very important how people in their everyday lives Just like in the 1700s, Americans went to drinking coffee instead of tea as a nationwide protest. So what can we do to really point this out? This is a corrupt agency, the FDA and the FTC, and it uh, needs serious change. We're being deprived of our rights as American people. And so what can people do in their everyday lives? It would be the equivalent of giving up English tea and drinking coffee back in the 1700s. Well, the first thing they need to do is to understand what this struggle is all about. And in order to do that, I think one of the fastest ways of doing it is to watch this remarkable video, Freedom on Trial. And that same number, that one 888 provides you with the chance to order it. It's 10 bucks. It's not bad for a 30-minute video that fully encapsulates the problem. Understanding the problem is step one. Getting the education on that will help. Step two is staying in touch with us through this same number and participating in this national campaign to change the law. You are an American citizen. You are entitled to your freedom of speech. It is time that you stood up and fought for it. We're making that possible. We want to hear from you. With the few minutes we have left in this hour, again, we've been talking with Jonathan E. Mord, the point of the spear in the fight for your freedom to know how food and how vitamin and mineral supplements can help you prevent and cure diseases. Jonathan, in the last few minutes, where do we need to go? Well, we need to become participants in this battle. Unfortunately, without the public support, I don't think this thing is ever going to go away. We have to change the law, and we have to make it stick. Fortunately, on September 20th, there's going to be a Capitol Hill briefing sponsored by the Liberty Caucus. That's 24 members of Congress who are interested in changing the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, the Federal Trade Commission Act, to correct and stop the censorship that our government is engaged in. And so for individual citizens to participate, we're urging them to call RU Free one That is 1-888-783-7331. Get the video, Freedom on Trial, learn about the problem, but also... If you believe in freedom of speech in this country and you believe that you have a right to receive truthful nutrient disease information, let us know. Let us get your name and your address. We'll be contacting you with petitions. We'll enable you to participate in a national campaign to change the law. We have gone to the point where we fought the government. We've beaten them four times in federal court, actually five times now. And despite all of that, they continue to engage in censorship. We now need your help to change the law. Really, this is what it's all about. So please call that number, 888-783-7331. That's 1-888-RU-FREE-1. And join us. Join Dr. Wallach. Join me in this fight against government censorship. Beautifully said, Jonathan. This is actually a call for the American people to support liberty in our land. We're busy supporting liberty for others around the world. It's time that we kind of reinvigorate liberty here in America, any time government is left unchecked, it is the natural nature of government to take things away. And so we have to be ever vigilant to keep what we were given in that Bill of Rights 
just because it's in the Bill of Rights doesn't mean we're going to be able to keep it. We have judges who, through their interpretation of the Constitution, take things away from us. We have agencies like the FDA and the FTC, through personal interpretations, their personal biases and bigotries against nutrition and being a totally 100% for drugs. The most recent case, of course, is Vioxx, where the FDA approved it. They knew immediately that it was going to be bad for the cardiovascular system, 139,000 heart attacks. And the FDA, in four years that that happened, never took it off the market. Merck had to take it off the market willingly. And yet, they're still trying to get vitamins and minerals off the market because of their favoritism to the pharmaceutical industry. Again, with that said, Jonathan, we have about a minute left. Uh, Can you throw in some last words? Well, I think you're quite right on, Dr. Wallach. Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. If we don't fight for it, we will lose it. We have a prime opportunity to fight for it now with the September 20th briefing session and following that, the introduction of legislation to end FDA and FTC censorship. I'm hoping that everyone out there will understand the significance of this. This is your freedom of speech we're talking about and will participate in this struggle. Thank you, Dr. Wallach, for talking about this important subject. You've always been in the forefront of this struggle, and I appreciate everything you've done. You're a courageous person, and you've never shied away from a fight. You've got some, you've got a good right-hand, left-hook combination, Dr. Wallach. <laughs> You're exactly right. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I'm so pleased to be on the same team with you, and I know that all of our American Longevity customers and associates and our leaders in American Longevity are in the fight for all Americans' liberty, and we're just asking for a little support. You know, All you have to do is remember that every time you buy something from American Longevity, a significant portion goes towards the battle against the FDA and the FTC for your rights to freedom of knowledge and freedom of information. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan E. Mord. Uh, We're going to make this CD available. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our troops, and God bless America. Thank you for listening to this presentation. And remember to contact the person that sent this to you. For more presentations and books that go into greater detail, go to docwallachmedia.com. And be well. And definitely check out my newest book, Fake Diseases. It covers all of the major topics that come up, like birth defects, blood sugar problems, bone and joint problems, cancer, autoimmune problems, and more. And it's on Amazon for just $9.99. And the audiobook read-along version is free here on YouTube. And the link for that is in the description of this video. And I've also published a book in response to some of Dr. Wallach's criticisms, including the major articles that have been written against him on the internet. So if you are a Dr. Wallach fan or a Longevity distributor, I definitely recommend having this book in your toolkit. And of course, make sure to check out our food page, Notice Foods, that's on YouTube and at Notice Foods on Instagram. We have a lot of content up there teaching you how to cook without the bad foods that Dr. Wallach describes and Dr. Glidden's 12 bad foods, all of that, all of the rules that you need to know. And we have experienced chefs and bakers who will answer the questions in those inboxes. 